I'm going to do a video today and I'm going to cover some of my tools and uh, this here is going to be a coyote skinning video. Uh, basically what I'm going to do is just going to, I'm going to pick the next coyote here that's ready to go and um, yeah I'll go through the tools and I'm going to try to cover all of the cuts and all of the pulls, every single thing that I do and I'll try to speak just a little bit about it. Uh, the relevance that I've found, that I've learned. Uh, if there's anybody out there that finds this helpful, uh, this is the cheat from me. I'm going to give you everything that I know. Boom, she's a slam dunk, 100%. Uh, everything that I've picked up from watching YouTube, paying attention to other trappers, um, and so on and so forth. So I uh, hope you enjoy the video. I hope you find this helpful. Here we go. Okay, so now I'm going to get. Here's, uh, so here's, here's some of my tools. Uh, these right here, this is what I'm going to use today. Um, this here, very specific function, obviously a tail splitter. This old horse brush is, uh, and I've tried a few, it is for me, the best brush that I have put on coyotes so far. Uh, another knife. I just do a couple of cuts around the tail with this one. This is a uh, vent and back legs. This is a little bit of work around the tail. Uh, this I use for the cuts up and around the back legs, uh, front legs, and the head of the coyote. And obviously my sharpening steel. Uh, also used for pulling front legs. So those are some of my tools for skinning. And these here are my pullers. Uh, I've had some comments about them and some information uh, requested. Pretty simple. Uh, just a sheet metal plier. I bought the, the better ones. I welded a chain link on there. And then uh, I've put an adjustable chain on there. Okay, uh, the cold roll is offset cold roll so that when they meet, you can see that in the light, they, uh, they're just offset. And so you basically, right there you can see it. Um, really, really cool. I do not attach these on the back legs. I find the lower back works best for me. And then uh, down here, I just skinned four coyotes. Uh, a lot of them are cold, uh, so I don't have a whole lot of mess here today. But these anchors right here, all I did was just filter them. I don't want to remove all this, but I just hilted them into the ground. There's a seated anchor in the, uh, in the concrete, and they are removable. And uh, yeah, I take and uh, Attach them to my skinning gambrel. I have been meaning to change these chain links. They work really good. Um, I've done everything with these, with the skinning gambrel, badger, fisher. Um, smaller than that, I just do it on the table. Fox, coyote, wolf. I've done them all. I've got a nine foot ceiling in here. Wolf gets a little short, obviously gets the job done 
And uh, my bad welding job on my skinning gambrel, the reason that I have it done sort of this way is so that I had as short a footprint on my overall skinning gambrel so that I could take and utilize all of the height of my ceiling. That is my setup and my tools. So now what I'm going to do is I am going to take and pick, I'll hand this camera over to Alexander. Put my gloves on them and we'll see what we've got here. Some of these are quite frozen. We had 25 below Celsius. What is that in Fahrenheit, Alexander? Oof, I forget. <laughs> 25 below Celsius, it's very cold. I think 40 below Celsius and 40, 40 uh, Fahrenheit, I think those are the same. That one is pretty good. Kind of a small coyote. Oh, he's still frozen right there. I think he's good. Uh, they're probably they're probably all gonna be frozen. Pretty tight. Pretty tight. Pretty tight. Box. Pretty tight. Okay. I might just have one more to do here today. I think I'll do this one here yet too, but that one's more frozen than this one. So my process is uh, is like so. I like to take and pull my gambrel off because these chains here. And so obviously I just take and I've got one link a little bit better, a little bit bigger. So I just loop the chain right through there. I go top leg first. That way I have some adjustability not have to fight with this back leg here. Up we go. I'm going to try to not be in too big of a hurry so that it uh, can make some sense as far as showing guys what I do now. So what I do, what I do for my brushing, so this one's pretty clean sometimes. They take and they get their business done in the middle of getting caught. You get it all over the fur. Not all over the fur, but uh, this one here is pretty clean. I can see right away, right here, you can see a tuft of fur, Alex, if you come in. This will probably tell me, even before I even touch this animal, that it'll have some sort of a scar. It might be a recent bite. They Sometimes they get, uh, they get harassed pretty good if they're in a group and uh, one of them gets in a snare, uh, they will harass each other. Harass, I say lightly, they bite. Um, I like to take and do a, a rough but relatively thorough brush. Try to stay away from kind of the vent area. This middle stuff here is all gonna stay out. I can see right away I'm getting hair. So that tells me that I'm going to have some action probably down by the lower base of the tail. I'll get the top a little bit done here. Get this stuff out of here. Then I'll take and I'll roll my tail over, cover up that vent, and then brush up through here. And this, and right away I can see. Like that's telling me that there's either injuries or scars or something of that nature. And uh, the idea is the more you can brush out right away, the better off you are because it will get brushed out later anyway. That's a lot of fur coming out. So we'll have something to look at once we've got him skinned. Kind of see what that's about and uh, I just I either run out of time or when it's time to take and skin coyotes uh, it's just not always perfect 
Um, I don't see any other anomalies here per se, but I do know that there's going to be something cooking back here. We'll see what that's about. Sometimes you can feel when they'll have uh, big burrs. There's certain plants, don't know the name, and they end up with like acorn sized spiky seed balls. I don't know what they are, but they embed in the fur. I don't think that's what we've got here. What it is exactly, we will we'll take and find out. Still a lot of fur coming out there. But we'll see. We'll see what we've got. So, you can bring that camera in a little closer now for doing these cuts, Alexander. First cut, this is my knife for doing my back legs. Pick your spot. You don't want to take and cut through the inside of the vent, but with the tail kind of pulled down, you take and poke that knife in just behind business part, run it through, cut that. That gives me my start. And the beauty of this knife that I find is you don't have to take and cut like this. You can take and cut at 90 degrees. And what that does is it allows you to keep that certain amount of tension. Like once I get up to about here, I can keep just enough push in that leg so that I can feel I'm in the leg, but you don't end up burying your knife deep in that leg. What I'm trying to do is I don't want to have all this muscle tissue opened right up because that'll just take and cause me grief when I take and pull that leg down. So what I do is I go in here and I try to make my cut. I go in and I go right until I hit that hip bone. So the point of that knife went straight into that, straight up against that hip bone. And now you just slowly just kind of work up above it. And then what it is, is it's feel for the knife. And as soon as your knife breaks out, what you want to do, and it's really important, you want to find where you finished off with your cut. And you can see here, even though the top is a bit rounded, just by pulling up slightly, you can see where the muscle tissue is cut a little bit. And you want to take and get your knife right back in that same spot. And then just work your way up where you want to be and the reason for that is and learning how to do this I know for me it was it was tough because uh, what can happen is if you end up losing your knife in there so often you lose it and you lose it and you lose it and you keep on going back in if you go back in and you go against the side of the skin if you don't start right where that cut is all the time what you're gonna end up with later, especially with a hard skin and coyote, when you go to pull, that coyote, that, that skin will split and you'll take and you could, if you're not careful, you can tear a big hole. And when I mean hole, I mean, uh, and it'll happen down the belly very often. What you'll do is you'll, you'll cut a big, you'll pull, tear a big hole in that hide. And you literally are gonna to have to take and stitch that. And it always, it doesn't hurt for you to you know, especially if you're learning, you want to come back here and check and make sure that you've done that cut. Because when you take and start pulling this fur back, if you've forgotten to take and make a cut and you're pulling too aggressively, the same thing can happen. You can take and pull down this way and take and put a big tear into that skin. So I'll just do this one the same way here. Just go in until I hit that top of that hip bone. Work that knife in a little bit. Then, this is kind of my, my bulk knife. I've just gotten used to using this knife. Now, it doesn't matter which leg you start off, but 
I'm just kind of doing all of this by memory. The way that I take and I hold my knife, hold this fur. Um, what I want to do is I want to keep this tendon in one piece. So I just take and cut just slightly on the outside of that fur. And then I'll bring a cut up above into that fur and I'll try not to have my knife cut over top of this fur. It'll just take and dull your knife and you'll just end up sharpening more so. Just a little more start right in there. Cut from underneath. Again, a little help there. And what you want to do is you only want to put pressure. What I do is I just put enough pressure just to take and cut that skin. Not enough to take and dig into, into all this bone and gristle and everything else. So then once I've got it, I'll just give it this initial pull just to kind of get it started. Good enough. Over to the next one. Now, what I should say, this next one here, what'll happen is I'm gonna end up finishing my cut this way on the outside of this tendon. And I'll just kind of show you a little secret that'll be able to have you do that efficiently without cutting this tendon. Because as soon as you lose this, all of this muscle wants to take and pull with your hide when you're coming down. So the same thing here kind of applies. Just use your knife on the bottom side. Cut from the inside of the skin. Help it a little on the inside. Work it right up to that tendon. And again, the pressure on your knife. So now with your thumb and your index finger, you can actually feel where that tendon is. So I've got the, the fur right here and the tendon right here. So that kind of tells you a little bit and helps you run your guide and you just give it a, just a nice, gentle little push with the knife and you come across this tendon. I, I know when I was a kid and I was skinning coyotes, it took me so long because forever I was damaging that thing to the point where I was cutting it. And I always had all this meat coming down. That's where the winch comes in so nice. So now the idea for me is I just keep working my way back and forth with pulling. Um, and I'll say this right away, what you want to do when you're making your pulls, you want to try to stay away from trying to pull straight down. What I always do is I always grab this and I want to pull inside. I want to pull this that way. Don't think that you're trying to take and pull this down as much as when you're working this edge and this outer edge, you want to take and pull it that way. You want to pull it up into the hip of that animal, but not down. And you'll find, I know if I found for me, it works really easy. So grab your leg for leverage, pull in, pull down, and then pull down the leg. And so, the idea here is, as soon as I just keep going back and forth on the inside, very often, you'll end up with some muscle tissue that'll come with the fur. You don't have to take and worry about that. That'll all stay with the fur. Now you just keep on pulling in. Got that into the belly, a little bit down. And again, now when I, when I pull this a little bit down, I didn't pull that down because I'm aggressively trying to strip this fur. I just did that a little bit just to give me a little bit more play on my next pull up here. So again, I'll just grab this fur and I'm going to take and pull it in that direction. It's almost like I'm pulling, I'm pulling out from here and then down that way. And this, this is a pretty easy skinning coyote. When you have an old coyote that has no fat, it can be really, really tough. This is an easy skin and coyote. So I'll just quickly work this other leg. Not the easiest coyote, but... Uh, so before I start working on this back end, I'll just get this down. This is far enough down right now. I'm going to get that front done first. We've got a female, so for a female, they're easier than the male. Um, 
I want to just take and just pull this to the inside kind of as far as I can and then what you're going to do is you're just going to reach in with your thumb and your and your and your index finger this is index right I think so yeah <laughs> and uh, you're going to take and feel uh, clumps of fat generally speaking you're going to have the female always has a clump of fat right there and what I do is I just use that clump of fat you can easily put your knife right in behind there and it's pretty easy to just make that little cut now you've actually got this clump of fat and you can just grab that clump of fat and the fur and just take it work that fur down and what I do here is I just kind of work this fur down just a little bit like this and it'll just help you later with the pull so that's the front that's done and again that meat right there see that all stayed with the fur that little bit that you'll find that'll come with the fur when you do that pull both sides doesn't matter male or female very often that'll happen but it's kind of one of those things where if you're if you're in the middle of skinning and you think you got to take a work on that you're just ending up wasting your time later you'll find so again this so this guy it's a little bit frozen what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take work this fur down a little bit and again anytime that you're doing pulls back here you're still gonna come back to your initial cut that you made up this leg up this leg when you took and stripped this leg if you have nicks in it if you had to put a jagged cut all cut all the way up anything that you want to do with grabbing and pulling right here uh, it's going to affect you to possibly do a rip or a tear now with what I'm going to do and also with fleshing later so that's why that initial cut it's almost kind of like laying the groundwork for for how your project of skinning your kaya goes my experience so I'll just try to work this a tiny bit further then the only thing that I do with this knife here is I take and I make this cut basically I want to take and just help the tissues right around this tail not not in a in a cross position but kind of coming from the body out this way and then cut this tissue right up near the fur here uh, and back but I want to do that without uh, uh, damaging the tail I don't want to take and weaken that tail for when I take and strip it and I don't even want to cut too deep and because this thing is uh, is frozen see just a little cut there can feel it letting go because it's frozen it makes things a little bit more challenging but you can see when I cut there it exposes that tail that's what I'm looking for just a gentle little cut right there till I expose that and what I don't want to do is I find for me is I like to keep the back side of this tissue underneath the tail or let's say up on top of the hips where the tail meets the hips I want to keep that attached um, and you'll see what happens when we go to take and pull it it'll give you a good start it'll pull that heavy membrane right across its back and you don't have to fight with it later uh, while you're flushing I'll show you that in a flushing video so I'll just take now that I have it exposed pretty easy got my fingers right through there I didn't have to work hard to try to get underneath there you just have to kind of just open that up a little bit and bang your fingers are going to be in and you just do a little pull there just to get that started just enough to expose that tail what's the time that we're running on this video Alexander 22 minutes 22 minutes that's too long I'll try to give them what they're looking for tail strips pretty simple I like to wobble that tail stripper just a little bit just to get it started once you got it started it's good give it a little pull now so here's the thing I've seen guys that take and say that uh, that uh, doing it with the winch is cheating um, or you know old school they want to they want to say that uh, shouldn't be 
you don't need the you don't need the winch but I what I will say is if you want to take and skin more than 10 coyotes in the winter it will be the it'll make you the happiest from any tool that you've ever bought and the reason is if you don't have a winch you are literally rubbing up and down every single coyote and hey to each his own but uh, I got tired of wearing a wetsuit uh, I mean if you don't wear them I mean you just literally soak all the fat and blood from these carcasses you get it all into your clothes because you're on it with your knees you're pulling hard you're wearing it on your arms uh, I can if I want I can skin a coyote with a white shirt and a relatively with not a mark on it not to say you have to do it but there's nothing that says a trapper has to take and operate in filth either so again my experience with my winch uh, I love it I love it it's an awesome tool so here I just take my clamps I just come in just beside the tail on each side just work it up onto the tail and I just kind of bottom it out where it seats right inside the uh, inside the clamp and then uh, depending on how big or small your coyote is that's kind of about how ten how much tension you want to put on it and uh, you saw how I skinned this fat away a little bit what can happen is if that if this fat is really soft it just squishes out the side of your uh, your uh, your clamps and you'll you can end up being a little bit too loose and then while you go and do your pull it'll just let go on you so that's kind of what I was up to there set this one adjust the tension a little bit just got a couple of carabiners on here run this baby down I want to make sure that I have my tool handy so that when I go down on my one knee I spend as little time as possible down there you'll see what I'm talking about There's no rocket science here, so what I do is I get it up, just put some tension on it. And then, what you can find, depending on how hard they're hanging on on the side here, you'll have this, this fur here on the belly, it can roll in and it's almost like it can grab. And if you're not careful, and again, if you've got nicks anywhere down in your fur, or if there's bad scars in the back here, I see my clamp look. Um, what can happen is you can end up with a tear. I find that as long as I take and I grab one leg and I just hold some tension down on it, it normally gives me a really good pull. My winch has got just enough power that I, almost, I can hear it just kind of coming to a stall. So. And I stop basically right here. Trying to have a look here, Alexander. So just short of the elbows here, that's where I stop. If you want to keep pulling, you're just going to put so much torque on them clamps, you can run into problems. Now on the inside here, I'll take my steel. And on a bigger coyote, you see some of these thinner, skinnier chest muscles where they come into the leg here. You want to have your, you want to have your steel on the inside. If you come in too close to the leg, You'll just end up going right through a bunch of muscle tissue so you go just inside there just work that steel through and give it a pull down this one here now is fairly well exposed there's just kind of one spot where it goes through and that is a simple process i like to take and make my cut just slightly above the elbow here. Both front paws. And then I take and finish my pull. Once you get down to the tips of the ears, your pull is basically done. Take and pull my clamps off.
Now, if this coyote was fresh, or I mean not if it was fresh, if this coyote was warm or caught same day that you're pulling off, you should see very, very little blood up until here, but now when you're gonna take and start skinning the, the head, you're gonna have bleeding. And I just find that for the price of two of these uh, brownie towels, it's well worth your while because it'll save you a whole bunch of time and you, you don't need to wash. And, and this is a bit of a cheat because he's a little bit frozen. He's pretty cool, so you shouldn't see a whole lot of blood. Um, but you'll kind of see how I maneuver this thing around. It's pretty simple. It doesn't hold up any time. Um, I just kind of hang on to it in my hand. I like to take and come in from the outside of the ear. I find for me, it just helps me take and get that start through that heavy cartilage. You don't want to be down here. You're going to just open that ear up too much. You just want enough to take and end up getting your finger in it. Again, this is kind of an easy kite to, uh, to skin. And then you use them ear loops to take and pull. And Depending on how hard the coyote is to skin, that'll dictate how much cutting you're going to do. But just do yourself a favor. Don't try to cheat and be near the skin here. Err on the side of caution and stay up above it. Same as the eye, just kind of roll over the eye. Once that eye is exposed, I just kind of run one cut down inside here. Just enough to take and get that finger in. Leave all the lips on. It'll just help you a little bit during flushing. Just work this other side to about the same. Cut the side of that mouth open. Now what I do, I've seen different guys, they do it different ways. I always like to take and get my bottom lip off at this point. Roll my finger through and just cut right above your finger. Try to stay on the skin as much as possible. And then just take and slowly just work your knife right above the right above the eyelet there and just hold pressure at this point just hold pressure because you might find an easy skin and coyote uh, will take and do most of the work just on the pull and once you get down once you see your skin pulled down to the base of these front teeth when I rolled down to here, that's when I just worked my knife in, and that is the end of it. That right there is a skinned coyote. So now, out of curiosity, I'll just have a quick look why we were brushing so much fur out. And uh, right here at the base, I can see that what we're, this would have already been We've got uh, just a bunch of scarring, just a bunch of scarring. So I think when we're gonna flesh, we're gonna take and see, we might have some small holes. Now, if we're careful during fleshing, we won't take and open these up, but these holes right here, these are healed up. If you're not careful during fleshing, you're gonna take and open those up. But hey, there you go. Bye. is uh, me skinning a coyote. I hope that uh, that uh, that can help somebody. If anybody finds that useful, um, then I'm glad. That's it. That's what I got right there. Thanks for watching.